Hello and welcome to my Teachable tutorial where I'm going to show you how to create an online course with Teachable in a step-by-step -step fashion. If you'd like to follow along or maybe you just haven't gotten to test out Teachable yet, I will leave my link down below in the description and if you click that you can actually get free access to Teachable. Let's begin. So what I'm going to be doing here is going over the steps that you need to pretty much just upload it and utilize some of the bells and whistles. I'm not going to spend too much on the aesthetics aspect, that's more of kind of knowing your brand, having your logos and so on and so forth, but I will talk about them in case you're curious about where the finer details go. To get started, what you want to do once you're obviously logged into your school, you're going to go to courses and then click on create course right here. Here's where you want to name your course. It says, what would you like to name your course? Don't worry, you can always change this later. So if you don't have a good idea of what it is, just enter something random. But I have an example here. All right, so we have the Affilio Blueprint. And of course, if you want to utilize this right here, you can help me generate a course outline. Ideally, you probably should have a good idea of what your course outline is going to be all about, especially if you already have it done and created. So that's going to be up to you. Oops, I'm already good with it. So I'm going to leave that unchecked and click on continue. Okay, so it's been created. Let's start building. And here's something I like about Teachable is they walk you through the steps and they pretty much put it on the screen in front of you. I understand I'm going to be showing you that as well, but in case you didn't even have this tutorial, a lot of it is going to be figure outable, if that's a word, right? So let's create our first section here. And this normally is going to be like an introduction. So I'm going to call it introduction and I'm going to click save. Okay, so when you think about using Teachable in terms of your curriculum, what it's going to be is a section, 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 and under each of those sections, you're going to have lessons. So usually this is the main title here, and normally what I like doing is having an introduction video. So even though this is called introduction, I'll probably include the lesson being the same thing. So new lesson here, and then we're going to click on save. So what we want to do here is actually click on the introduction button. Excuse me, I said button link. And this is going to allow us to add specific content here. So also there's going to be some aspects here. So lesson settings, you can have student comments and of course, public preview. This makes the lesson viewable by anyone. Give potential students a glimpse of your content. So when would you want to use this? Probably when you're giving away something good, but maybe not super good. Like you don't want to give away all the secrets, so to speak, right? Because then anyone can see inside your course. This is good in case, you know, when they come to the sales page and they want to see a specific lesson, that'll give a good idea of maybe how you teach, what's going to be in there, and just what they can expect overall from, say, videos or whatever it's going to be. So you can choose to use that probably for a few of them, right? And then, of course, student comments, if you want that, that's up to you. Let's click on add content here. And as you'll see, we have text and images, video, PDF viewer, audio, banner image, resources, code examples. We have quizzes, upsells, referrals, and custom code. I'm not going to get into that because that's a little bit more spiffy, I guess you could say. But videos are going to be a very popular aspect of Teachable. So allow me to show you how to do that. Let's click on video. Then what I want to do since I have videos on my file, I'm just going to find it and click on that and upload it. All right, so there's my introduction video. Keep in mind, there's also going to be Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, OneDrive Business, or you can utilize a link. That's going to be up to you, and I'm just going to click on Upload. It'll take a few seconds, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how long your video is. Mine's only 21 megabytes, so it could take a lot longer if you have a bigger file. And the max file size is going to be 2 gigs. All right, so keep in mind that the video is going to process and for longer videos, like I talked about, it's going to take a little while. So what I'm going to do is just give it some time, wait until this is done. And then once it is done, we will continue on from there. All right, so that just finished, which is great. And if you want to edit it a little bit more, you'll see the file name can't edit that, but we can have a thumbnail in case you don't like what that is. Maybe it's something different. You want to change it around. That looks fine to me. If you want to manage the subtitles, what you can do is upload a specific file. And of course, we have display settings. If you want to show download link, that's going to be up to you. You know, you can always keep that off. A lot of people don't like having a download link, but you know, that's user preference, of course. So I'm going to click off that. You'll notice it's going to show publish right here. What you can do is actually just publish all of them once they're done. So you can actually keep that how it is, or you can add more to it. Let me just show you what it looks like very quickly. Let's click on preview here. Hey, it's James Canzanella. Yeah, and there's going to be me. We can also click on um, complete and continue when you are done with that. So far, it looks great. Uh, you'll notice that it has some cool branding colors. I will show you how to change those as well. And let me just show you how to add some more content. So that's good. Let's go back to the curriculum. So that's going to be the first section. Let's say we have another section. So let's name it. Okay, we have the Affiliate Blueprint Explained. Let's click on Save and let's do a new lesson. All right, I'm not sure what I want to call this one. I know I have a video, so once I figure out what the video is, I can add to it. I'm going to click on Save, and once again, let's go to Lesson 1. Let's do another video right here. 
Okay, so I have the power of affiliate marketing. This is only 22 megabytes, so it probably won't take as long. Very similar to the last one that I think was around 21 megabytes. So once this is done loading and rendering, I will get back to you and show you how to add a few more things to your course. Okay, so while this is processing, remember I put lesson one. I wasn't, I didn't remember exactly what it would be called. Now that I have the video title here, in case we want to edit this, allow me to show you that. We can click on curriculum right here. We can click on these three dots right here, and then we can do rename lessons. So we had the power of affiliate marketing, okay? And click on save. Let's go back here. It's probably gonna still be rendering, but once this is done processing, I will get back to you. All right, so while those videos were rendering, I chose to upload a few more of them. As you can see, the same exact process. We have our new lessons. We just added a video for each specific section. What I wanna show you how is you can actually add more content aside from the video. So let's say we have this one right here. We have the affiliate blueprint explained. Let's say we wanna add some more in there, okay? What we can do is text and images. We can do PDF viewer and so on and so forth. Let's say we wanna do this. Here is where you can add some text. And you'll probably want to do this in a lot of your teachable lessons, of course, or whatever it's going to be there. You know, you can add even more content. So if you want to do this, maybe a PDF viewer, I'm going to upload a PDF here very quickly on my computer. Okay, so we have the Affiliate Blueprint Explain PDF. Okay, there's actually going to be nothing in there. I just did a PDF file so you could see that. Of course, if you want to preview this as well, let's do that. Here's where we can add some text. And ironically enough, we have a beautiful blank PDF, but that's the cool thing. You can actually just pretty much embed it in there, right? So let's go back over here. Now let's go back to the curriculum as well. So what you can do here is there's gonna be two options if you wanna publish it. And before I do that, before I get ahead of myself, this is gonna be the process that you're going to walk through. What I do like, once again, about Teachable, very simple to do. Like I said, you have your sections, which are kinda of gonna be like your chapters, right? And then within those chapters, you have your each specific lesson. So you would just simply continue on with this process with each of your sections. And of course, within those sections has the appropriate lessons. What you can do when you wanna publish it you can go to quick actions and you can just do publish all. And that's going to be for each specific section. So once again, if you go here, you can publish all of these as well. So if we reload it, it's going to still be green, which is good. Now there's another way of doing that. I'm just going to open up information in another tab right here. And you can see publish course. We've already done it before, but it says all sales pages will be publicly visible and that students can purchase and enroll in your course and access any published lessons. So that's just another way of doing it if you really want to publish everything aside from just the lesson. So I wanted to let you know about that so that you are aware. Next, what we can do is the add a price section. So we have our curriculum right here. Let's preview it. Okay, there's one. Let's just say we want to start that lesson and we can play it. Hey, it's James Canzanella and thank you. Okay, and then of course it would go on to the next one. And then we have that one. I'm not sure if this one's done rendering. Okay, it is, but anyway, that would be that specific one. And this is just an example of where we added text and of course our blank uh, PDF embed looks beautiful, I know, but let's go back over here. Now we can add a price to it. So let's click on this button right here or we can just simply go to pricing, whichever is gonna be easiest for you. Okay, so let's click on add pricing plan. So we can do free, we can do a one-time purchase, we can do a payment plan, set a fixed number of monthly payments or subscription, which say maybe you have a membership where you get new content every 30 days. I will show you how to drip feed content as well in case that's something you wanna do. But let's just go with a one-time purchase amount. All right, so very quickly, I just added in something quick. I put the name, subtitle, detailed description. Looks good. We can do limit enrollment by cap or expiration date and time. So limit the number of students who can purchase at this price based on an enrollment cap or an expiration date. So if we wanted to do this, number of enrollments available, you know, you can choose, I just, <laughs> I was about to say choose and utilize at the same time. You can utilize this to pick the uh, number that you want to do it. You can also do an expiration date. And of course, display enrollment cap on sale sales page and at checkout. So students will either see the enrollment count or expiration date on sales pages um, and a checkout. So this is great if you want to utilize this for scarcity. This is something I love how they built this in there. I remember when I was doing a ton of launches, like say on like JBZoo back in the day, where you would have a specific amount, but it would never show to anyone. So you couldn't really build that 
you know, scarcity or urgency. And once you had enough people buying, you had to manually just turn the product off. So this is great that that automatically does it for you. And it says limited product access duration. Under this plan, students will receive access to the product for a specified amount of time, after which they will lose all access to all content. So I guess there's a few reasons why you might want to do that. For me personally, if I'm selling something, I want the customer to have it indefinitely, unless it's a subscription thing, all right? Then that makes a little bit more sense. So that's up to you if you want to utilize that. Anyway, let's click on add pricing plan. All right, looks great. So that's going to be the one-time purchase and I have the checkout URL up above right here. So it talks about the payment information, billing address, and of course, order summary. This is if you want to utilize a thumbnail for your specific course, that's where that would go. Okay. And of course, we have our published course, which is going to be right here. And remember, this is the information section that we came back to. I'm just going to click on publish course and publish course. Okay, so now let's look at a few more tiny details. For example, we have our design templates. Remember I talked about this previously, where if you want to change around how your branding is going to look. So they don't have a ton of templates, but they're pretty cool. I like them. I love the uh, ability of being something simple, or you can use the colossal. That's up to you. So if we wanted to use this, we can preview it first, which is going to be important, right? Make sure you like what you see. I actually like that one a lot better. I do love the simplicity aspect. So let's click on activate. And ready to make your course lecture viewable, click activate to activate this template. Your current active temple will be replaced. That's completely fine. So we have that there. And of course, we also have our sites and themes. If we want to change around the branding and what it looks like, I'm going to open this in a new tab for you. Okay, so this is where your logo and branding stuff is going to go. This, I, th I believe you saw when we opened it up. We have our school thumbnail and, of course, our favicon, which is going to be this little icon right here, which is very small, 32 by 32 pixels. Uh, we have our font family in case you wanted to change that around. Don't like that one. Obviously, you know, what you use is going to be based upon what you like. If you do find something you like, make sure you click on save right there so that it does stay save and change the theme. And of course, we have our color palette. If you want to use some presets right here, for example, I believe I have one of these. If not, I might have changed it around. So what you can do is go with one of these. You'll notice that the colors change. And maybe if you don't like all of those, you can actually just change it yourself. For example, the buttons and the links. Maybe you want that a little bit more green something like that and make sure you click save. And then of course we can always preview it right here. Okay. So that's something I obviously need to change right there. You'll notice that the background is too dark for the actual font. That's why we preview it, right? So if we go back here, use just a change around, let's say this, and then we can uh, save that. Perfect. So you'll now see that it's obviously it sticks out better, but maybe I don't like blue as much. So we have headings uh, and this is a footer. So let's see, is this the nav bar and footer? Let's change this to more of a green. It's kind of messing around with it so you can see and preview. Yeah, a little bit too green, but I think you get the idea there, right? Now I can actually see the logo, what it looks like, and so on and so forth. So that's how you can mess around with a lot of the aesthetics aspects of it, of course. And one more thing I want to talk about, I understand there's a lot of great bells and whistles when it comes to Teachable. But the last thing I do want to talk about is the Teachable drip feed. Very easy to access. So we're going to click on drip right here. And what we can do for each specific section, what you can do is do set schedule. And so this normally, you know, if you want to activate this like zero days after a student enrolls, that means they get it immediately. But should you want to do something specific or a date after enrollment, you're going to see here that if you want this to open up at a specific time, you can click on this, change that around and go from there. So that or that really going to be up to you what you want to do. But OK, now I want to give you one example when it comes to this specifically. Let's say you were selling a membership and that every 30 days you would get a brand new lesson. So when they initially bought the product, what they would do is get the first sec section. And let's just say there was like a ton of lessons in there, right? So what would happen is the next section would come up 30 days and, you know, they pay every 30 days for new content. So if you wanted to do that, what you can do is click on set schedule and then we can do days after enrollment. This would be 30. And then what we can do is activate. OK, so it also shows you students who have access and don't have access yet, which is pretty cool. So like the up and comers and when they'll get it. So you'll notice that if you wanted to continue this process, so the first section and all your lessons would be available immediately. 
the next section and all their lessons would be available 30 days. And of course, if the next section was going to be there, it would be 60 days after a student enrolls and then 90 and then 120, 150, 180. And that's how you can build out an actual membership site that charges a recurring billing. So they pay every 30 days and every 30 days they get a new section open. So that's going to be the teachable drip feed section. Like I said, there's a lot of other moving parts in terms of bells and whistles, a lot of great ways that you can really increase your course overall. But I think that's going to do it when it comes to this teachable tutorial about how you can create an online course. I'm going to do a few other videos just so I don't make this one super long, which it already kind of is. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will do my best to help you out. And of course, if you haven't gotten the test out teachable, you can utilize my link down below. They come with free access just to be able to try them out. My name is James. Thank you so much for sticking with me and watching this video, and I will see you in my next one.